This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As California, Oregon and Washington face unprecedented fires, President Trump is refusing to link the devastation to the climate crisis. After ignoring the fires for a week, Trump is traveling to California today. Over the weekend, he blamed the fires on poor forest management. But, you know, it is about forest management. Please remember the words, very simple. Forest management, please remember. It's about forest management. California Governor Gavin Newsom rejected Trump's focus on forest management practices. I'm a little bit uh, exhausted uh, that we have to continue to bait this issue. This is a climate dam emergency. And I'm not going to suggest for a second that the forest management practices in the state of California over a century plus have been ideal. But that's one point, but it's not the point. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti also pushed back on Trump's characterization of the wildfires as a forest management issue. Speaking on CNN, Garcetti said the president was reluctant to help California, Oregon and Washington because they have Democratic governors. This is climate change, and this is an administration that's put its head in the sand uh, while we have Democratic and Republican mayors across the country stepping up to do their part. This is an administration, a president who wants to withdraw from the Paris Climate Accords uh, later this year, uh, the only country in the world to do so. Uh, talk to a firefighter if you think that climate change isn't real. And it seems like this administration are the last vestiges of the Flat Earth Society of this generation. Right. We need real action. In Washington state, where firefighters are tackling 15 large fires, Governor Jay Inslee also emphasized the climate crisis is most responsible for the wildfires. These are not just wildfires. They are climate fires. And we cannot and we will not surrender our state and expose people to have their homes burned down and their lives lost because of climate fires. Meanwhile, in Oregon, six of the military helicopters operated by the state's National Guard that could have been used to help fight the wildfires are not available because they were sent to Afghanistan earlier this year. This is Oregon Governor Kate Brown speaking Friday. Well over a million acres of land has burned, which is over 1,500 square miles. Right now, our air quality ranks the worst in the world due to these fires. There's no question um, that the changing climate is exacerbating uh, what we see on the ground. Um, we had, as we mentioned earlier, unprecedented a weather event with uh, winds and uh, temperatures. In addition, we added um, a, 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 a ground uh, that has had a 30-year uh, drought. So it made for extremely challenging circumstances and has certainly exacerbated uh, the situation. For more, we go to Eugene, Oregon, where we're joined by Timothy Inglesby. He's a wildland fire ecologist, former wildland firefighter, now director of Firefighters United for Safety, Ethics and Ecology, known as FUSI. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Tim. First, describe the scene in Oregon. Well, the situation changes day by day, sometimes even by the hour. But this past week, we've had over two dozen very large fires burning on the west side of the Cascades. Uh, these have been explosive rates of growth, tens of thousands of acres, several miles per day. And uh, it is natural for Oregon to have big fires high in the mountains. What's very freakish about these is to have these fires coming down from the mountains, barreling down our valleys, marching right up to the doorsteps of major metropolitan areas like Portland and Eugene. Uh, so it's it, 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 even uh, beyond those people within the reach of flames, the whole region is under a pall of smoke that's literally blotting out the sun. From British Columbia to Baja, it, we've, as, as you noted, we've had some of the world's worst air quality. And uh, interestingly, this, this dense pall of smoke is largely grounded the fleet of helicopters and, and air tankers that would normally be working on these wildfires. President Trump refuses, even being in Reno, Nevada, to make the connection to the climate crisis. He said this is linked to two words, forest management. 
Talk about the link to the climate crisis and what we're seeing throughout the West. And these fires are going way beyond. I mean, they're in Montana, they're in Colorado, as well as Oregon, Washington and California. That They're devastating. Well, it's, 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 uh, these are climate fires, and uh, they're, they're the product of, of uh, extreme heat waves and uh, prolonged droughts and then very low humidities. Uh, what's really uh, rare about this, it, this event here in Oregon, is it was a region-wide east wind event. Uh, the winds came screaming you know, from the deserts on the east side of the mountains up over barrel down these uh, valleys and and uh, just propel these flames. And uh, though, though some scientists are hesitate to attribute a single event to climate change, these are the exactly the conditions predicted by uh, climatologists. And they're, they were once they were rare, I mean, they're not entirely unprecedented in our, you know, prehistoric past, they will become much more frequent uh, in, in the days ahead. So. Uh, just a combination of heat and dryness and winds and uh, lightning storms are are making these fires explosive. What about the fact that uh, six helicopters that are supposed to be fighting Oregon's that could be used to um, uh, fight the wildfires are in Oregon, are in Afghanistan? Yeah, well, I guess uh, you were, we're fighting one more or the other all across the planet. But— uh, in addition to that, there's been several, uh, you know, firefighters and engines and other crews from Oregon that have been in California or Colorado for weeks. So, I mean, it's it's really a west-wide phenomenon, uh, another indication of, of climate change. Uh, Trump isn't entirely wrong about forest management playing a role, because in addition to these, these fires being propelled by these hot, dry winds, they're also uh, raging through the the, the industrial uh, uh, tree farms that were clear cut in the 1970s and 80s, covered over with uh, densely stocked uh, young trees, and uh, where you know for an old growth forest it takes a very rare, very high, high intensity fire to, to kill those trees. It doesn't take much for uh, these these tree farms to just be incinerated and. Uh, what we'll be seeing here in the Oregon landscape is kind of a time going in reverse. The, the, gr the green veneer of tree farms that uh, are being stripped off, and we'll just see these proverbial moonscapes of you know barren, ash-covered slopes uh, as these tree farms are incinerated. That's what's burning in the holiday farm market, uh, holiday farm fire uh, outside my town. So. Can you talk about um, your experience as a firefighter and what you think needs to happen right now? Now, we had heard that something like 10 percent of the population of Oregon was under evacuation orders, uh, but that was taken back. What is happening? Well, it, again, it's very chaotic when these fires erupted. Uh, in some cases, uh, you know, by the, the wind event blew down five, uh, power lines in the dark of night, right on the edge of town. And so people had n almost no warning. And uh, flames lapping at their, 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 their walls, and they had to flee for their lives. The, the first crews to arrive there were not even able to engage the fire. They had to help people evacuate. So uh, it, it wasn't for a couple of days that firefighters were actually able to fight the fire. They were being more like traffic control cops. So. Uh, it, it we're really shorthanded. The, 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 a very important point, though, is no amount of firefighters, engines, air tankers, or whatever will be able to handle a, a phenomena like this. This is a climate-driven wildfire. Nature is far more powerful than than, than us, and uh, and so unless and until we get a handle on our fossil fuel emissions, there's nothing we can do that will really uh, prevent these kinds of events from happening. And what's happening, very little that we can do that other than just get out of the way. Uh, Tim Inglesby, um, if you can talk about your daughter's lawsuit. Last year, Democracy Now! spoke to Kelsey, Kelsey Juliana, who was the lead plaintiff in the landmark youth climate lawsuit against the U.S. government. Um, I started by asking her about the lawsuit. 
lawsuit is a constitutional climate change case against the U.S. federal government filed by 21 courageous young individuals um, in 2015. At the time, the youngest was eight and the oldest, myself, was 19. Uh, this case looks at the actions of the federal government for the past several decades of helping to perpetuate the climate crisis by continuing to fund the fossil fuel economy endangering the lives of all citizens, but especially disproportionately harming the lives of young citizens and future okay. generations. So that's Kelsey Juliana, Tim, your daughter. Um, explain this lawsuit and what's happened to it. Well, I'm very proud of my daughter and her peers who are, uh, you know, taking on the, the federal government. An important point for people to understand is it's not the inaction of the federal government that is part of the climate crisis. It's their deliberate actions pushing more fossil fuel extraction and burning, uh, uh, you know, promoting the, the, the alteration of the planet's atmosphere and oceans. And, and so this, this is a constitutional-based case that, uh, that you know, this is causing—the government is causing my daughter's generation, all future generations, of all species, for that matter, a significant harm. And so— uh, uh, it's 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 been tied up in court for years. And my daughter was was you know young girl when she started this case. Uh, who knows when it will be resolved? She started under middle. Obama, is that right? Now moved on to yeah, Trump. Right. So because this has been you know uh, both parties and all administrations for decades uh, have knowingly been putting the the planet in peril by uh, promoting uh, the fossil fuel civilization, you might say. So. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that the case will be, will be resolved in, in our favor. But in the meantime, uh, these are big, big, uh, you know, huge problems dealing with climate change, dealing with rural sprawl. I mean, that's what's making this a disaster. So many people are in, they're in the pathway of these fires. And then the legacy of, uh, of clear-cut logging livestock grazing, you know, mining, other things that are that have really damaged the, the ecosystems, made them less resilient to, to climate change. So, Timothy Inglesby, if you could talk about wealthy people hiring or taking out Cadillac insurance and what this means, hiring private firefighters. Right. Uh, this, this is uh, wealthy people uh, can can purchase private firefighters to protect their properties in case of a a fire. And uh, that goes back to the early days of even municipal fire departments where, you know, you'd have to buy uh, protection and they would skip over homes that weren't part of the service and protect those that were. What, but uh, what that portends is that the further decline in the, in the public, public agencies and, and the ability of, of agency crews to protect all of us and in favor of just those who are wealthy enough to, to buy their own protection. And uh, just like the pandemic, though, wildfire has it makes no distinctions between rich and poor. And, uh, you know, as, as now in Oregon, we, we've suddenly realized we're all in the fire zone, even those of us in the middle of the city. It just takes one home to ignite. And then we have house to house ignitions, like a domino effect. And so uh, we're all in this together, really. You know, California Governor Newsom just signed a law that will allow some prisoners who are firefighters, um, who haven't been able to become firefighters once they get out of jail, though they're among the most experienced, that they will have their records expunged, making it easier for them to become professional firefighters when they're released and apply for jobs. Newsom tweeted Friday, quote, California's inmate firefighter program is decades old and has long needed reform, unquote, along with a picture of him signing the law in a scorched forest. Uh, a lot of these private firefighters, um, some of them, are those former prisoners who couldn't get in to the public firefighting forces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in California, the inmate firefighters are have a reputation to be some of the bravest, most hardworking, uh, you know, fearless firefighters. Uh, this is, is about time. It's a matter of justice that, that uh, once you know, they pay their sins, they are, should be members of society with, with uh, job opportunities. But uh, we have to kind of get beyond 
the monopoli monopolization of fire management by government agencies. And really, there's a there's a huge role that communities and and citizens should play as partners with uh, government agencies in preparing their homes for fire, uh, because we know we can't prevent all these fires. Large fires are are natural and inevitable, but urban fire disasters are entirely avoidable. And uh, Timothy Inglesby, we want to thank you so much for being with us. Wildland fire ecologist, former wildland firefighter himself, now director of FUSI. That's Firefighters United for Safety, Ethics and Ecology.